If you ask recipients of the food stamp program how it originated and who sort of pushed it along, I don't think they would know, but that's not important. The important thing is that it's, it, they benefit and uh, they have a better quality of life. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that we revolutionized the food stamp program for the better. We brought in millions of people who heretofore had never heard of the program or who couldn't afford to participate. The food stamp program was established as a safety net against hunger and malnutrition for low-income Americans and their families. It saved me, you know, and it kept me out of the hospital, the emergency room. Diana's food stamps help where her disability income isn't enough. Without the food stamps, I'd have to spend cash on food. Sometimes that took away my medication money. I don't think that any mother want to see their children suffering and starving, but I went through that. Ida supports herself today, but back in the 70s, the food stamp program gave her support to raise her sons. When I applied for the food stamp benefit, it was a blessing. Today, the program helps millions of families, seniors, people with disabilities, and low-wage working Americans afford access to enough food. Food stamps were first introduced to the American public as a pilot program during the Great Depression. Mabel McFiggin of Rochester, New York, was the first food stamp recipient. She paid $4 and got $6 worth of stamps in return. An orange stamp could buy any food, while a blue stamp was good for only what the Department of Agriculture deemed to be in surplus. That program lasted through the early 40s. Food stamps were revived in the 60s as part of the war on poverty, but Americans still had to pay for their stamp coupons, and for the poorest, that was a hardship. Many of us today probably don't remember the extreme poverty that existed in pockets of our country in the 1960s. We saw some many who died as a secondary consequence to severe malnutrition. Dr. Aaron Shirley was part of a team of doctors that investigated. You'd see skinny legs, uh, skinny arms, uh, shrunken facial features, and a bloated belly. And that's what really, really, uh, as a pediatrician, is what got my attention. The doctor's work became part of a CBS documentary hosted by Charles Corralt called Hunger in America. This baby is dying of starvation. He was an American. Now he is dead. It shocked the American public. I was watching a documentary on CBS. It was 1968. And I remember saying, why are they looking at hunger in the United States? The incident in that documentary that caught my attention was they picked up on a little boy standing uh, alongside of the room, leaning against the wall. Well, when you get to school, what do you have to eat there? Yes. You don't have anything to eat when you're at school? Yes. Television interviewers said to this little boy, what do you think when you stand here day after day watching the other children eat and you can't join with them? He said, I'm ashamed. Be ashamed. Are you ashamed? Yeah, be hard. Why are you ashamed? I don't have no money. I said to my family that were watching that documentary with me, you know, it's not that little boy who should be ashamed. It's George McGovern, a United States senator a member of the Committee on Agriculture. So I went to the Senate the very next day and introduced a resolution to create 
what was the Select Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs. And for the next 10 years, that committee led the way in this country in making sure every member of Congress, every American knew about hunger in this country. Bob Dole was the ranking Republican on the committee. I was the chairman, and we worked hand in glove. We didn't play any partisan politics with this issue. What really impressed me were the field hearings, and you saw it firsthand, and you knew it wasn't something that some network maybe dreamed up or whatever, found some isolated cases. I think we began to understand it was widespread and it needed, needed to be addressed. In the early 70s, while food stamps were helping to protect millions from hunger, it was clear that changes in the program could improve its efficiency and reach. Senators Dole and McGovern took the lead. They teamed with Congressman Tom Foley in the House and the Carter administration to pass the Food Stamp Reform Act of 1977. This bipartisan legislation revolutionized the program and made the program more efficient and more accessible to the poor by finally eliminating the requirement that Americans pay for a portion of their stamps. If you didn't have you know, that money to put up, then you weren't eligible for the program. It didn't make any sense to me. It was around this same time that Dr. Aaron Shirley returned to the places of severe hunger he had witnessed a decade earlier. It was after the food stamp program had been in existence, and uh, it was just amazing uh, and rewarding to see uh, some of the same people that we had interviewed, uh, how much better they were in terms of their nutrition status and their, their outlook on life. Today's food stamp program is even stronger as a result of key reforms put in place in recent years by Congress, states, and the White House. Today's program benefits 26 million Americans every month, more than half are children. It's more pain for you to have your children to be hungry than for you to be hungry. The program is extremely efficient and has the highest level of accuracy in its history. 98% of those who participate today are indeed eligible. Benefit transactions are simpler. Paper coupons have been replaced by debit-like EBT cards. The program is a key support for working families. It serves nearly twice the number of low-wage working Americans than those who rely on welfare. One of the myths in the food stamp program is that it serves only those who won't work or can't work for some reason. But the opposite is true. We have more and more working families, especially families with children. Improving nutrition is a top priority. The food stamp program has a really aggressive nutrition education component to it, and we really do need to help people learn how to eat a nutritious diet to improve their health and overall well-being. And the program rapidly responds in times of economic need. Nearly two million new households were temporarily enrolled in disaster food stamps after Hurricanes Rita, Wilma, and Katrina. After the storm, I lost everything, and I was informed that we could apply for food stamps. I did not have any food, I did not have anything. And so I applied for food stamps, and I received food stamps for two months. Food stamps have all but eliminated the severe hunger and malnutrition that we saw in the 1960s. But yet, in the U.S. today, the Census Bureau estimates that more than one in 10 adults and one in six children don't have regular access to enough food. Your stomach is constantly growling. It starts to hurt, be in pain. It just, it just feels like a ball of knots. Dr. Deborah Frank founded the Grow Clinic in Boston for malnourished children. There is a substantial hunger problem. It's at least one out of five of the children under three coming through uh, our emergency room here. And it is really frightening to me that food insecurity uh, is so prevalent among these very young children in the critical period of brain growth. Dr. Frank says the food stamp program is having an impact. But I've seen the one the family's gotten some food stamps that, you know, suddenly the child comes back in a month and you say, wow, that's great weight gain, what happened? 40% of those eligible for food stamps miss out on benefits. Many don't know they're eligible. Others find the process too difficult. Even for those on food stamps, benefits can run out before the end of the month. 
creating tough choices about whether to buy food or pay other bills. I have to decide on what if I want to pay the light bill or what if I want to put some food in the house. It was a hard decision. Charities and churches provide some help, but can't fill the growing need. We can't do it all. You know, we're stretched. Uh, our congregation members are stretched. Barb Packer is head of Lutheran Food Pantry Services in Central Ohio. This pantry alone serves 6,000 people a month on average, a 25% increase over last year, and it's a struggle. We're at the point where a lot of the small community churches, um, as good-hearted as these people are, they can't continue to give at the, at the rate that they're giving to take care of the problem. At this elementary school, there's no shortage of kids who come to school hungry. Children come to school with stomach aches because they're hungry. Children don't perform well in school because they're hungry. They want to come to school because they're hungry and they know they're gonna get a meal. Every Friday at schools in Lincoln, Nebraska, kids receive special backpacks filled with food from the local food bank so they can eat over the weekend. There is hunger that uh, the backpack program exposes every week. We're currently distributing 510 backpacks every Friday afternoon. Food banks are a great support system for hungry people, uh, but bigger answers are needed to keep uh, people from going hungry in, in our country. The food stamp program is as essential today as it was 30 years ago, and it can do more. Millions of Americans are still in need. You're gonna have to come to where the people are, see the suffering, see the effects and how it has a rippling effect in, in our total society. I think the food stamp program is a, is a must. It's really a blessing, you know, for the government to provide this because a lot of people couldn't make it if it wasn't for that because I've been there. This year, the highly respected National Journal called the food stamp program one of the government's top successes. Well, I started out in Congress not being a supporter of food stamps because I uh, was one of those that believed that there was a lot of waste, fraud, and abuse. I evolved into a supporter of the food stamp program uh, based on the facts. It's our responsibility as good citizens and as a government to help give people the means by which they can help themselves. And I think food stamps are one of the tools that we can use. This is essential that there be at least that kind of safety net to provide food, not just for the elderly and the very young and the helpless, but ordinary citizens who are trying to get on their feet. We've always had people in need, and we've always tried to address those needs, but never in such a comprehensive way as the Food Stamp and the Reform Act of 1977. I still would like to see the food stamp program expanded so that we don't have hard-working, poor families running out of stamps before the end of the month. The food stamp program has a rich history in helping the nation's poor, and it continues to be our nation's first line of defense against hunger.